back to a new video. As you can see, I'm not in fact in my own house. Honestly, I wish my house was this vibey though. I feel so thematic. So Halloween, I am at my friend Lexi's house. We are in Oklahoma. We, me, I'm in Oklahoma. She lives here. My TBR is a little short just because I only have a couple of days here in Oklahoma and I have a massive ass book on my TBR this week. And that is A Soul of Ash and Blood by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Now, if you have been around on my channel for a little bit, you know that every time JLA releases a new book, I go and visit Lexi or Lexi comes and visits me and we go and we read the new JLA book together. And so it's like our little like annual hangout, but it's right like JLA is releasing like too many books a year. We, we can't even keep up. Like the new book comes out literally at the end of this month and we haven't even like started reading these. Now this is the fifth book in the From Blood and Ash series. So like I'm not really going to be talking about this book too much in detail because like I said, five books in, the plot's already so off the rails. So it's fine. The fun thing about this book though is that it takes place from a different character's point of view and we kind of like get to recap from what I've heard and what I consume, like recapping the first four books with everything goes down, but different person's point of view, which should be so much fun to dive into because anytime I read Lexi, it's a fun time. The other book that I brought that I'll be finishing, probably not during this trip, but like later in the week, is The Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. If you saw my 24 hour readathon, you saw that I read A Darker Shade of Magic and absolutely ate that up. And apparently this takes place partly on a boat. And we all know how I feel about books with boats. They are the absolute best. Also, I'm realizing I'm like spinning this entire boats time. And boats and hose. Boats and hose. So I'm so sorry about that, but y'all are just, just deal with it. First of all, how dare you? <laughs> but that is it for my TBR. Honestly, like, hold on. How long is this book? This book. This book is 500 pages long. This book is like 600 something pages long. Yeah. I've got like 1100 pages just within these two books. So honestly, plenty. That's enough. But Lexi and I are going to head to a cute little coffee shop to do some reading. So I'm very excited. So let's be off. back home back in this cozy atmosphere that i love so much back in my spinny chair that i also love so much <laughs> oh my goodness mm, fix you make you a little more centered here now i have made hella progress into a soul of ash and blood yeah, and by <laughs> hella progress i mean i've caught up with where lexi's at actually you're ahead of i'm ahead of where lexi's at and i started a week ago <laughs> <laughs> we were there for like almost like three or four hours at the coffee shop it was so zen it was so zen. It was like a little house and it had like nobody there. Like by the end, we were like the only ones there. The Play, music the choice, playlist. the playlist. The person who had that ox, it was hitting. Busting. B busting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on page 295, almost on page 300, basically halfway through. And honestly, it has been so fun because I don't hate the Blood Nash series. I feel like I complain about JLA and her books a lot, but like here I am still reading them every single time. But getting to go back in time and relive the story from a different person's perspective has been so fun. But every time they snap into present day, I'm like, go back. Go back to where we were. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like, no, go back. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to hear about this. We want a hawk. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's who we really are after. Before I picked this book up, I told Lexi, I was like, the audacity of JLA to like write a whole book of just like rewriting the entire series, but like from a different person's perspective, kind of bold. Right in the fucking middle of it. <laughs> Literally like book five, not even like releasing like a little prequel, not releasing like a post novella or whatever, kind of like Midnight Sun with the whole Twilight series. No, just like book five, let's just recap the entire series. But honestly, kind of needed because I didn't remember jack shit that goes down in this book Same. until I was reading it and I was like, oh my God, I forgot about that. 
And the characters are so fun in the beginning, and the romance is just so... It's just it's cute. It's so cute. It literally makes me smile. Honestly. But then, like, the plot starts kicking in, and, like, more and more and more and more and it's more truthful. elements keep, like, getting dumped in, like, <laughs> this freaking book. Too much. Too much goes on. Too much. Like, too much to keep up with. Right, like, so much. Too much. Too much. Too much. So, it's been fun to just kind of go back to when stakes were, like, way lower. Like, we knew there was, like, a prophecy and, like, the whole thing with Poppy, but stakes felt lower. Things were a little bit more fun. It wasn't, like, life or death, end of the world type shit. Just, like, a fun little time. So, definitely enjoying my time reading this. I this is such a funny, like, <laughs> we're on, like, the very, very outside of frame. Do you have any thoughts? Oh, my God. I don't know what to say. This is... I love this book, and has it got yeah. you back in the reading mood? Definitely, because she's I was read some reading, shitty ass books um, lately. <laughs> and Air Comes to Rise. No offense, but I DNF'd it after the fourth book. I was just done. I uh, don't recommend. <laughs> but um, I spent like a good three months on that series because I was just dreading reading it. And I'm glad that I finally put it down and picked up books that I love because now I'm reading more, which is great. And tomorrow we're going to a bookshop, and I'm gonna get her to buy Fourth Wing. So important priority. And there we so. go. We're gonna start another <laughs> incomplete series. This is Lilith, oh, aka Lily. She's a cute. She's a menace. Don't let her little face and fool you. And she knocks everything over. <laughs> she is a menace for sure. Such a menace. I feel, very, I feel like a gamer right now. <laughs> it's the chair. You know, gamer girl status. Honestly, you need to show her my PC. It's pretty nice. I haven't told to show you. Is it on her PC? Oh yeah, check that oh, out. Look at that. Sick as fuck. Cord management game is a zero. Questionable. Questionable, but the PC is pretty nice. Lexi and I ended up going to two coffee shops, 
half price and then two different restaurants as well. So we basically spent all day out. It's like 6 p.m. now. We're back home, but I did finish A Soul of Ash and Blood while I was out. I think the only thing that really annoys me about this book is simply the entire book is just recapping the entire first book. This really shouldn't have been like part of the main series, I feel like, because book four ended on this massive cliffhanger and there's like a small portion of what happens in this book that's important, but that could have literally been condensed to like a novella size and you could have had just like the novella that they could read and then have this standalone as just like, oh, it's the entire like from Blood and Ash but from Hawk's point of view instead of having it as book five. It was really nice to kind of recap and go down memory road again because I did really enjoy the From Blood and Ash in the early days, but it seems like more and more as the plot develops and like more elements keep getting added and more like bomb drops basically keep happening. I'm just like less and less interested in the series. It's still fun. So I did definitely enjoy this simply because like I said, it was from Hawk's point of view and I loved getting to see kind of the behind the scenes of what we didn't get to see in From Blood and Ash, but I don't think this should have been book five. I think it could have been a separate novel. And I'm figuring out too that JLA isn't even finishing the series. They're finishing the other Flesh and the Fire series first. And so I have to still wait for the conclusion of this Dagon series, which is fine. Like I said, it's been fun, but it just annoys me, like the order of things. Also, I finished this book at a little like murder mystery coffee shop that Lexi and I went to, and it was like the coolest little place ever. It was such a very unique aesthetic. Perfect, obviously, for October. Loved the vibes for that, but I feel like the two different coffee shop aesthetics are either like cozy, warm, comfy sort of vibes, or like corporate where it's like business people doing business stuff but to go to like a murder mystery theme I mean it was so cute like the little freaking mariachi band right next to us was super fun in the beginning until it started playing every five minutes for like a minute or so but it was a fun time regardless and the owner was so funny as well but that is kind of my brief thoughts on a soul of ash and blood Honestly, I keep forgetting what these dang books are called. <laughs> I'm so deep into the series, I should know by now. I'm excited for the conclusion of this series. I'm actually more excited about the book coming out on the 31st, which is book three of the Flesh and Fire series, because I'm way more invested in them than I am with these characters here. But it was so long though. But I can't even complain saying that JLA needs an editor because it was just recapping the entire first book. <laughs> so honestly, Kind of shocked that it, did, it wasn't 800 pages at this point. Now, Lexi and I did do a little bit of book shopping and she almost caved and bought Fourth Wing, but then she ended up ordering online, but like good enough, it's coming in tomorrow. So she'll be able to start it so very soon, hopefully. And I ended up picking up Ender's Shadow by Orson Scott Card. I absolutely love Ender's Game and I've been dying to reread it. But then I kind of remembered like this existed. And so I decided to just pick up the mass market paperback because one, I was like, 450 and who doesn't love an absolute steal because no one likes mass markets except for me I feel like honestly, there's my hot take for the day. I freaking love mass market like paperbacks They're I just I don't know I feel so intellectual holding them and they're so tiny. They're so cute This is basically Ender's Game except for we're following the events that happen in the book from Bean's point of view We get to learn more about Bean and his character and Bean is like one of my favorite characters I finished part one. So I'm on page 95 and it's just been so good so far and they're just now arriving at like the actual like battle school academy which i get again i think i just have a thing for like books set on academies and put it in space i'm like yes so fun i'm just so so excited to also read a book where it's literally like the same thing but from a different character's perspective because i realized the soul of ash and blood right we're following from hawk's pov same story though from blood and ash and then this same thing as ender's game but from bean's point of view like Kind of weird how that happened. I did actually have a gathering of darkness that I brought with me, but then when I bought this book, I was like, I wanna read it and I wanna read it now. And it's so very rare that I buy a book and then I immediately start reading it. So honestly, one for the history books. <laughs> and so I'm gonna sit here and read this and hopefully get a decent chunk of the way through it before I update you some more of it. If I do end up finishing this, not today, but like this week, I will probably still pick up A Gathering of Darkness, but I'm just gonna sit down, we're gonna relax, and we're gonna read for the rest of the night, basically, which is ideal. Honestly, a perfect day. <laughs> Hello, I am back home now. I don't know why I always feel the need to like announce where I'm at when you can clearly see from my background, but the trip to Oklahoma was so lovely and so needed. I do love just like getting out of the house and kind of recharging around the people that I love. And 
I have a reading update. Somehow managed to finish the entirety of Ender Shadow. Granted, we sat and read for probably like five hours. And so it was inevitable that I would probably fly through yet another book. And I want to personally apologize to Bean because I said that this was Ender's story except for from Bean's point of view and I couldn't have been more wrong. This book was phenomenal. It was more than just a soul of ash and flesh and fire, whatever the freak the book that I read earlier was called. It wasn't just a retelling of the same story with a different POV. It was so much deeper than that. We got to see Bean from obviously like his point of view and his life experiences, which differ so much from Ender. And I think the coolest thing too, is there were so many pieces of information in this book that you had like, I had no idea with just reading Ender's Game. And it complemented everything so incredibly well. Honestly, it blew my mind. Solidified Bean as just like my absolute favorite still. Like what like blows my mind is like, they're like six and seven or eight in this book. Like they're so, they are, it's a child. It's, it's a child. And just to have that amount of intelligence of not only like mathematics and like general like studies, but also the ability to read people. Oh, it was just so well written and I implore you, if you enjoy Ender's Game, you will not regret reading Ender's Shadow. Honestly, I might try to continue this series. When I read Ender's Game, I did read Speaker of the Dead, but that was just completely different in terms of where the plot went. With this one though, I kind of like how forward thinking Bean is with kind of the problems that Earth is gonna face. And so his fate is very different than the one that Ender's faced, which is so freaking sad, but they tied in elements. Oh my gosh, we got to see two characters in particular that are featured a lot more in Ender's game. That's kind of who Bean might actually like team up with to like sort out the political situation. I'm not sure exactly if I'll like for sure, for sure continue, but I'm definitely intrigued enough to at least try out the next book. I can't remember what the next book in the series is though, but that's for later me to figure out. Honestly, a stunning read. I did give it five stars. I enjoyed it that much. I don't know why I don't read more sci-fi. I need, I need to get on that pretty soon here because this was so bloody good. Now, the other fun thing that I came home to was a couple packages actually, and I didn't order anything except for this nifty little thing which will now hold my artwork without it like getting wrecked. So I have, I don't even know if you can see that, but that's a sketch of the Throne of Glass map. Uh, it looks really good already, but my sketchbook was kind of getting wrecked in my bag. And so I needed like a harder kind of carry case for when I, you know, leave my house to draw, which happens very rarely these days. But anyway, that's, that's not the point. I, you don't care. You don't care about my Amazon purchases because I think these are books. So I'm gonna just, let me just grab. So we have box number one from Amazon, which is so exciting. I have no idea what's in here. Unless I did order something. Did I pre-order something? Honestly? Okay, so this is from my pair of a tie, AKA Katie. She says, happy 10K subs, 200K is on the horizon. I can feel it. So proud of you, bestie, from your pair of a tie. And it's the Frugal Wizards Handbook for Surviving Medieval England by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second secret novel that Brandon Sanderson wrote during quarantine. And I read Tress and I absolutely loved it. And I heard some mixed reviews about this book with people not really jiving with Brandon Sanderson's sense of humor, like his attempts at humor in this book. But like, I'm a sucker for Brando Sando and I wanna give it a try. And like, it's set in medieval England and it has like a time traveler and this is gonna be such a fun book. I love the cover too. Like, oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Parabatai. You are my favorite. I love you. You're the best. And then secondly, I have a box from Nelly. It is not an Amazon box. It is actually a, I already know what it is and I'm so excited. I don't know what it looks like though. So that's like the most exciting part. This was all the way from Sweden. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I don't know why I'm reading the back as if I can read Swedish, because I cannot. She says, I hope this book will be a nice addition to your collection. This is the 12th book in the series, but I hope that it doesn't affect anything, which obviously it doesn't. I'm so grateful. I hope you like it and that it's in nice condition when it arrives, Nelly. And then on the back, P.S. Love your videos. They bring me happiness and great inspiration. Thank you for introducing both Bujo and reading Bujo to me and giving me the best recommendations. That is so sweet. Oh 
my goodness, this is so cool. So now I have a Swedish copy of Ranger's Apprentice. And it's book 12, which is book one of Royal Ranger. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Thank you so much, Nelly. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I can't wait to add it to my collection, which is like literally right over my shoulder. So let's do that now. Let's just move my journals and my mirror out of the way. So we have a Dutch copy here, which is actually a short story that they actually got a physical book for and is actually just included in like the back of a random brother band book. And then I have the German edition here, which absolutely stunning. Then I have a, whoops. Japanese copy, which I actually bought myself because I went to Japan and I searched for it, couldn't find it, so then I just bought it off Amazon. And then we have the Russian copy with the trident, which is so freaking funny to me still. I love it. We have the original first edition of Ranger's Apprentice in English, which I found in my favorite coffee shop bookstore, which was so serendipitous. And then we, of course, have the special Dutch edition, which is literally the thing that started it all. This was from Vera, so. So I'm just gonna slide these over here. I think it's gonna go next to the German edition because the German edition has this like really aggressively orange spine. And we're just gonna stick that sucker right in here. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I can't wait until I have like an actual like proper bookshelf to display these on all four facing as they deserve. Thank you so, so much both to Nelly and Katie for sending me these. I love how the Swedish edition of Ranger's Apprentice arrived like just in time for my little like 10K celebration. Oh my gosh, I'm like so thankful for y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was gonna talk about plans that I had today. Oh, I don't really have much in terms of reading. Since I did so much reading this past weekend, I'm just gonna take a break for a day from reading because I just, I can't look at words on a page, but I am gonna work on the Poppy War map because I need to start like outlining and working on that. So I will share some little clips of you, of you? No, of that. And then I'll hop back into reading probably tomorrow, but today <laughs> I just can't look at any more words. I just, I just can't do it. <laughs> with some reading updates because guess who finally started a gathering of shadows holy crap okay so the thing about V.E. Schwab something about her books I just like never want to pick them up like it takes a lot of motivation for me to be like okay let's do this but the literal like by the first page I was once again absolutely hooked and I just don't know how she does it, and I love it so much. So in this book, Kel and Lila have kind of split ways. So Lila is currently on a ship, and the way that she managed to be on that ship, 
I love her so much. She's still like one of my favorite characters. I, I love her so much. And then Kel obviously is still kind of stuck working for the crown. And since he has his new kind of connection with somebody, he's kind of really limited to kind of what he can do, which he already has been limited, but people just don't trust him anymore, which is so sad and he's not handling it very well. So I'll be interested to see kind of what comes of that. I think the main plot of what's gonna go down in this book is there's this elemental game, this like magic game where magicians kind of join. We haven't really gotten the details of everything that goes down in this magical magician game, but I think it's gonna be fun. And it takes place in London, which is where Kel is at, and that's where Delilah is now heading. And so I think our characters are gonna meet up again, which is always such a fun time. I am enjoying Lila's point of view way more than Kel's right now. Hopefully they'll get back to like the equilibrium of like enjoying them both equally, but I've just been enjoying Delilah on a freaking boat, okay? I just so much fun and we got introduced to a new character as well I just can't remember his freaking name Alucard 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 we're gonna say Alucard I'm not sure if that's how you say it it's A-L-U-C-A-R-D I don't know but he's a really interesting character. Apparently he's super proficient with his magical abilities. And so he's entering the tournament, which is the whole reason why the ship that Lila is on is heading back for London. And yeah, it's just such a fun time. I'm excited to see what becomes of the plot because I'm not sure what exactly we're going for here in terms of the plot. Yes, we have this like elemental game, but is that going to be like the whole course of the book? Are we going to have some tensions rise at the game? Honestly, no clue, but I'm excited. But also I just wanted to, I just wanted to see Lila more on the boat. You know, I love her and her little crew. It's so fun. So I read that for about an hour and a half. I don't think I ever mentioned like what part I'm on. I'm on part four called London's Calling, page 154. I didn't have a bookmark, but luckily the special edition has a freaking bookmark. I love it. Honestly, it almost makes me wish that I had these copies myself. This is my sister's copy I'm borrowing. But this dang permanent sticker just irks me to no end. So I probably I probably couldn't do it anyways. So there's that. The other little update that I have in terms of like book related things is I finally have my hands on Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. I read the first book in my last vlog, along with actually reading A Darker Shade of Magic in my last vlog, and I needed to get my hands on book two because I have book one, three, and four, but alas, I had no book two. So now I do, I got it from the library. It's so jarring reading big paperbacks from the library. I mean, look at this flop. Honestly, it's not too bad. Don't really like floppy books though. I just thought I'd show off the flop. Um, another controversial opinion coming out. I like mass market paperbacks and I don't like floppy books. So that is my mini little update here. Honestly, we're gonna see how much further I can get into A Gathering of Shadows before this vlog ends because it does end tomorrow. I might read it a little bit more tonight and give you some more thoughts and updates, but so far I'm really enjoying it like I had mentioned and I like all the characters that have been introduced and I can't wait for the plot to kind of start plotting. Not that I'm complaining, like I said. Lila, freaking love her. Oh my god, there's a squirrel! Oh. It is quite a bit later and I have done quite a bit more of reading. I didn't mean to read for as long as I did. I wasn't planning on trying to finish the whole damn book tonight, but here we are, many, many more pages in. I am on page 350, which I'm just now realizing because I was so freaking enamored with this book. So let's, let's talk because this book keeps reminding me of other books in like the best way possible. Like it's giving Night Circus, but not the parts that I didn't like. It's giving Shadow and Bone. It's giving Hunger Games a little bit. I'm just so excited with all the elements that are being, just all the elements. I love it. Previously I had mentioned a la carte. We were just kind of introduced to his character as the captain of our little ship. Uh, privateer, not pirate, you know, and he's giving Sturmhond so hard from Shadow and Bone, but in like the best way. I just, I think a lot of like captains and like 
pirates and such. They just have that really like cocky attitude that I just love. And in terms of like the magical tournament, things are just kicking off. Page 350 and the games are like just beginning. And oh, <laughs> so much has happened. I had a few ideas of how like all the elements and all the characters would start to like interact, but the way that they're about to is not at all what I expected. Let's just say that. Also, a lot of the characters have been growing on me. Reese is actually one of them that I really wasn't sure that I liked in the first book, but now I'm, I'm just connecting to his character and I feel his pain and I just love what he's doing for Kel, even though it is really sad that he has to do what he's doing for Kel, if that makes sense. I'm so bloody excited to see how the tournament turns out. Honestly, with all the elements at play in this book and in the tournament, really anything can happen and I'm so excited to see what V. E. Schwab does with this whole situation because I'm just having so much fun. Lila is still being a queen and I love her so much. I have not had a character that I love like this much in a very long time, I feel like. Maybe like Kelsier and Rin from Mistborn, but Lila, love her. I think I'm gonna just stop reading this book. I have to work on some art. I'm drawing the Throne of Glass map right now. I did need to finish off the Poppy War map, but that's not happening because I don't feel like working on it. I kind of want to start the Throne of Glass map, but we'll see if like I actually do that. I'm not gonna record any of it for y'all because you've already watched one time lapse of me drawing a map. So maybe I'll keep that one for later. I don't know. That is my little update and I'm really excited to finish this tomorrow. Honestly, like I'm definitely going to be finishing this tomorrow. There's 530 pages, 539 and I'm on 350. So 200 pages left and I think it'll be a perfect book to finish off tomorrow and then we can wrap up the vlog which is so lovely i'm so i'm so happy with the reading that has been going on in this vlog well 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 Whew. i am so unbelievably grateful that i didn't read the series as it was coming out because that cliffhanger has me stressed and very excited i am so blown away by ve schwab right now because a sequel right it's gonna be a trilogy well it's gonna be it is a trilogy and i feel like sequels are always really hard to write because the first book so good and when it's so hyped and just setting up for something really big i feel like it's so easy to read the second book and then be disappointed that it just doesn't match up to the first book you feel me? I feel like a lot of series are like that. I think one of the only exceptions that I can think of off like the top of my head is the Akatar series, where it's like decent in the first book, but then it like second book, love. This book, however, defied all odds because I think I enjoyed this book even more than I did the first book, which is so weird to say, but honestly, I, um, hmm. I, I just, it was done so right. Everything was done so well in this book. From, I, oh, I need to collect myself. This book was very interesting in terms of like kind of how the plot went. We got to see the characters kind of grow and we got to see certain actions happening outside of their spheres that were influencing the decisions that were kind of made in the end that led up to the third book, which is obviously like the big climax. So this book is so beautifully crafted where it was meant to be a trilogy. Obviously, I don't know how things end, but I'm, I have so much faith in V.E. Schwab to wrap this up so beautifully that I'm gonna just go ahead and assume that it wraps up so beautifully because obviously things were not solved by book one. It was left open. And then the second book, we're getting more political elements and everything kind of starts, you get more bits and pieces of the world and more of the politics, but it doesn't take away from getting to know the characters some more and getting to see kind of their abilities grow as well. But nothing major really goes down in this book. There's no like major plot. Like I had mentioned earlier, the whole tournament was actually like 
a core of the book. It was leading up to the tournament. But then we had to figure out how to get our characters into the tournament. And then even stepping back before that, we had to figure out how Lila comes back. And then even before that, we had to figure out how Kel and Lila then end up interacting again, because like, we obviously know that they, they would. And everything built up to obviously what you assumed to be the climax, which is like the tournament, the winner, but that wasn't like the main focus near the end. The end, then we started switching back to, okay, here's where the next book is leading into and it's gonna be so good. Here's our actual like big bad bully who we're gonna have to deal with in the next book. Things have to happen, things have to happen. And I'm so very excited. I have loved every single one of these characters. Honestly, I also really liked how they introduced the villain throughout this book. I was kind of worried with, so sometimes when you like switch back and forth between characters and perspectives and such, I just, there's always that one perspective that you're like, I don't care, let's get back to the main story at play. But the chapters were always very short, but they were stuffed with critical information for us to kind of get to know this villain and get to know his motives and get to know kind of his cronies almost. And that all led up to the final chapter. And then obviously the third book is going to start off with a bang, considering the last page of this book is just... I knew it already. Like, there's so many context clues to pick up on and knowing where things are leading to in terms of the last page. But doesn't mean that I'm not still super duper excited about it. I think the one thing that this book lacks almost but not even lacks it's just the romance i i feel it's so interesting because i love me some fantasy books i love me some fantasy romance books i love reading romance books where that's the main plot and i love reading fantasy books where they intermix romance as a subplot but this one i'm just confused on what they're trying to do because at first i was like oh we're introducing a little like love triangle and then i'm like oh okay now we have a fourth player so now it's kind of like a web and now I'm like just confused, but also the characters that I feel like V.E. Schwab are gonna put together, I, I get, but I don't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen why exactly they like each other. Sure, they're like kind of kindred spirits or whatnot, but I wanna see more of that developed in the third book if we're gonna push that plot, right? If, if there's gonna be romance, you gotta kind of lay the building blocks of that. And I'm not completely convinced that the building blocks have been laid. For that but it doesn't mean i'm not enjoying it i'm just saying i'm still having a lot of fun i am extremely eager to pick up the third book but that will be done not right now because i just i just can't i need oh, i need a second i i keep saying i enjoy the characters so we're just gonna move on because that's really all i have to say is characters were great my tripod is sitting on my desk here lovely loved it now i'm just here to wrap up the vlog so these are the three books that I had ended up picking up. Obviously, Gathering of Darkness, Ender's Shadow, and A Soul of Ash and Blood. Soul of Ash and Blood, I think I gave four stars. I don't think I talked about my star rating when I actually read it. I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it a little bit more than the other books, and I think I've rated all the other books three stars. So I was like, okay, four stars it is. Ender's Shadow got five stars because ugh, I was blown out of the water with this one. Honestly, I didn't think anything could top Ender's Game in terms of like this world. And I thought I enjoyed the movie until I rewatched it after reading this book and I was like, oh, okay, so the movie is garbage. And it muddled with all like the plot lines in my head, but it's whatever. And then obviously I read A Gathering of Shadows. So I'm quite pleased with all the reading I did. This book was like 500 pages, this one was like 600, and this one was almost 500. So honestly, quite a substantial amount of reading was done in this vlog and I did hope you enjoyed watching and hearing my thoughts. Please let me know if you've read any of these books, especially A Darker Shade of Magic. I am just obsessed with this trilogy and I literally am so excited to read the third book. It's not really like my favorite favorite series, but it's definitely up there in like a contender position where if I list off like Ranger's Apprentice and Akatar and The Poppy War and The Name of the Wind, I'm like, okay, after I run out of those options, I'm like, okay, let me let me go through the list. And Darker Shade of Magic is up there for sure. But that is enough of me blathering on. Thank you so much for spending some of your time hanging out with me. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And I also hope to see you in the next one. Toodles.